I was watching the fully inflated football podcast by the franchise, that franchise guy, a.k.a. Marcus Whitman, um, YouTuber, and he did a podcast of the top 10 players at every position for football. So I'm like, I'll do that for baseball. And, you know, we did the, we did the one, me and Ben did, you know, this off season. We never finished it. We're, we kind of went back and forth. I'm going to go really quick because I want to get all these done so we can get to the, the phone calls. So we're going to start with catcher. Number one, and I'm not going to read out too many stats and whatnot. I'll, I'll tell you why I like, you know, one more than the other. But, you know, I'm not going to just be reading off stats and whatnot. It's not too in-depth. I did the in-depth work before this, and I'm just giving you guys my, my list. Catcher, number one, JT Realmuto. It's not even close to my opinion. Most well-rounded catcher in the game. He's a 5 tool player. He does everything well. He's been banged up a bit this year. Um, great arm, great framer. Maybe the best hitting catcher. But actually, the best hitting catcher is our number two option, Will Smith. Will Smith, finally, finally the Dodgers are listening and not just putting Austin Barnes out every day and just not using Will Smith. It's just infuriating seeing them refuse to give this guy any playing time, and he's playing really well defensively this year, better defensively than Austin Barnes. He's playing really well this year. Just He's probably the best hitting catcher in the league. He is so good. Will Smith is awesome, and he's super young too. He's going to be with the Dodgers for a long time. Three, Yasmani Grandal. He's most people's number two or number one. I met number three. He's a little inconsistent for me, but he's probably the best framing catcher in the league. He's got a really good arm as well. Handles the pitching staff well. Grandal's a great player. I'm still pissed the Mets didn't sign him uh, when the year the White Sox did. If Steve Cohen bought the team a, uh, a year sooner, he might be a Met. And now, we have, now we're stuck with James McCann. Um, number four, big riser here, Carson Kelly. Carson Kelly has been unbelievable this year. And this list is taking a lot of this year and the past. It's kind of a bit of everything and a little bit of projection too. Carson Kelly's hitting the ball unbelievably hard. He's been unbelievable this year, man. Um, is he the best defensive catcher? No, not he's not amazing. He's fine, though. But when you hit like that, I don't care. Carson Kelly, number four. Uh, get to the chat right here. Damn, no Nito at number one, shaking my head. Hey, Nito's playing, it like, playing like it right now. Hey, man. You platoon him and, and McCann because McCann plays well in the platoon role. That's what I've been saying. Maybe McCann will actually start playing well, but Nito has just been unbelievable. Getting back to the list. Number five, Wilson Contreras. You know, he's not the greatest defensive catcher, but he's got maybe the best arm out of any catcher, and he's a really good hitter. Not off to the best start. He strikes out a little too much this year, but he's a really good player. Number six, young stud, Sean Murphy. This dude's a future gold glover, has one of the best arms I've ever seen from the catcher position for a player this young. Um, he's a really good defensive catcher, and the hitting will come. He's hit a lot. You know, last year he hit really well. This year, he's off to a kind of a slow start. He's a really good player, though. Christian Vasquez, number seven from the Red Sox. He kind of just does everything well. He's a great hitter, a really good defensive catcher. He's kind of come out of nowhere the past couple of years and really become, you know, not just a backup, like a legit stud starting catcher, and he's a top 10 catcher at this point. Number eight, one of the most valuable players in baseball, in my opinion, Austin Nola. This dude's the definition of a super utility guy. He can literally play everywhere. He, I think he's played like every position except maybe shortstop and pitcher. Crazy. Really good defensive catcher. He's up there in age. He's like in his 30s, but he's going to last long just because he hasn't been he hasn't been catching so long to the point where it's going to do some damage on his legs. Uh, Austin Nola is a really good player. Obviously, brother of Aaron Nola. The Padres acquired him from the Mariners. Um, last trade deadline, he's going to be there for a little bit. He's a really good player. Number nine, Omar Narvaez is one of the better hitting catchers in the league. And this year, he's actually playing much better defense than usual for the Brewers. Former Mariner, just like Austin Nola, was on the White Sox before. He's on the Brewers now. Um, really good player. Now, number 10, this one gets me excited. Buster Posey. Buster Posey is back, baby. OPS above 1,000 this year. He's been unbelievable. And I think taking the year off last year, he had the opt-out year. I think that really helped him, man. I mean, you know, catcher is such a physically demanding position from – you know, squatting, throwing, you know, having, you know, blocking and stuff, just dropping down like that. You know, it's a physically demanding position. I think having that year off really helped him. I'm going to get a quick water break before we move on to first base. First base. This position is loaded, man. Where should I put this? Right here. First base is loaded. Number one, no surprise, Freddie Freeman, one of the best hitters in baseball. He just won an MVP last year. Just one of the best well-rounded players. He's a borderline top 10 player in all of baseball. He's unbelievable. Number two, I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. Jose Abreu. Now, did Jose Abreu deserve the MVP last year? It's debatable. He obviously won it. 
A lot of people thought DJ LeMahieu. I personally thought Jose Ramirez with a brave second. But this is not his only good year. He's been unbelievable every year of his career. And last year, he learned how to field. He, he came out of nowhere with the defense. Jose Abreu is such a good player. He's one of the best hitters in baseball. He kind of does everything well. He's a great leader. He has all, you know, all the intangibles. What's not there not to like? Jose Abreu is awesome. Coming at number three, stud this year. Bad year last year, but he's pretty much always been good since coming to the Dodgers. Max Muncy. Max Muncy has one of the best eyes at the plate. He's a really good defensive first baseman. He can also play second. He can play third. Super valuable, man. Hits for power. He's just, he's just a really well-rounded player. You know, tough year last year, yes, but he's phenomenal. Number four, Anthony Rizzo, one of the most well-rounded players in baseball. He never misses games, which is a big bonus for him. He's one of the best defensive uh, first basemen. He hits really well. He's so consistent, which is so great to see. Number five, hot take. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Now, I know. This is a breakout year. It's only been a month and a half. But this guy was the number one prospect in baseball. So this performance, we all saw coming. First year, struggled, played third base. I think a lot of times players, bad defense reflects their hitting. I always said from off the bat, once I first saw him, you know, a couple of his games, he's not third baseman. He's too big. You know, he had to lose some weight, and he lost the weight. Last year, hit the ball really hard. But a lot of them were ground outs, hard ground outs, stuff like that. Now he's elevating the ball. He's playing first base every day now. He lost a shit ton of weight. Oh, my God. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was like, he's kind of like John Carlos Stan back from, like, 2017. He just murders the baseball. He's unbelievable, man. And Yeah, is number five a little little high? Yeah, maybe. But it's not like there's some random player who's just playing well all of a sudden. It's not like Akil Badu, you know, who's some nobody playing really well. So, yeah. Number six. Paul Goldschmidt, not after the greatest year. He's starting to decline a bit, but his years with Arizona were just unbelievable. He's, again, a really well-rounded player. He also steals bases, not as much anymore, but especially in his prime. Paul Goldschmidt, great player. He's pretty interchangeable with Matt Olson. Matt Olson's really good. The injuries are a bit of concern for him, but he's just maybe one of the most powerful first basemen outside of our, our next guy. He's super hits for insane power, phenomenal glove. He's won multiple gold gloves, really good picking it. He can pick it really well at first base. Olsen's really go, good. Andrew says Olsen is low. I mean, all these guys can kind of be interchangeable. Like first base is a loaded position. So yeah, if you have Olsen at number four, I don't blame you. I mean, all these guys are just amazing. Number eight, big meat Pete, Pete Alonzo, baby. Now, now after the greatest start this year, he's playing really well though. Well, that, that didn't make sense. I just said he's not a great start. He's playing pretty well. He's hitting the ball really hard, and his defense has really improved this year. You know, people still think his defense sucks because that was always, you know, the scattering report on him coming, coming into the league. Uh, he's playing defense. His defense has been really good. He's been a little, you know, hurt for the last week, which that's another thing about him. He never gets hurt outside of this one injury. Um, the best power and maybe in baseball, he, you know, he hit 53 home runs. Oh, juice ball. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, in a down year last year, he hit, what, 16 home runs? I mean, he's an insane power, um, you know, getting better defensively at first. Number eight, he has a room to really elevate on this list as well. Number nine, we kind of have a kind of a copy of him who plays on the other side of town in Luke Voigt. Yankee fan's going to murder me for putting him behind Pete Alonzo, who had the better 2020, Luke Voigt, who had the better 2019, Pete Alonzo. What do you really value more? I value the full season more. So I'm taking Pete Alonzo. Very similar players. Very powerful hitters. Not the greatest batting averages, but they walk a decent amount. Just They're both great players. Eric Hosmer rounds out my list at number 10. Um, had a couple down years initially with the Padres, but he's really gotten better about elevating the ball, not just hitting it hard on the ground. Launch angle is kind of the name of his game nowadays. Really solid player. All right, second base. This is definitely a weaker position. Not a great position here. But there are some guys. Number one, I got DJ. DJ uh, number one, I got DJ LeMahieu. He's playing a little more first base. He's probably going to move more towards that role later in his career. I don't know how they're going to do that though. With Luke Voigt playing first base and John Carlo playing in you know in the DH in in the Bronx, so he's still a phenomenal hitter. I don't. I, he's not off to the greatest start this year. At least he was earlier. I might be totally wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. If he's if he's playing well now. He's, you know, phenomenal contact hitter. He goes up, goes the other way seamlessly. 
He's my number one first, uh, second baseman. He's won gold gloves in the past. He's won a batting title in both leagues. Arguably could have won the MVP last year. I think he finished third. Number two, Cattell Marte. He's back. Um, you know, he's kind of an every other year player, it seems like. He had the ridiculous year in 2019. He's off to a ridiculous start now. He can also play center field. Really good athlete. Powerful hitter. He kind of does everything well. So, Cattell Marte. Number three, Jeff McNeil. Not off to the greatest start. One of the best contact hitters in baseball. I kind of wish he got more back to just... Now he's kind of pull, trying to pull the ball a little more. I miss kind of his old approach, but he's definitely trying to... I, I see him trying to get back to that a little more. He's a really good player, man. You know, he's playing second base every day. He's not just moving around every day. He's playing a really good second base defensively. Him and Lindor, once Lindor finally learns how to hit, um, are going to be an insane up-the-middle duo for years to come. Jeff McNeil, number three. Number four, big comeback player right here. Marcus Simeon for the Toronto Blue Jays. Made the move to Toronto from Oakland this past offseason and also made the move from shortstop to second base. He also made the move from shit hitter to elite hitter. He's been phenomenal this year. He had the ridiculous 2019 where he came in third in the MVP voting. He's back to that. He has been unbelievable this year on my fantasy team, too. Let's go. Marcus Simeon coming in at number four. Number five, young guy right here, Jake Cronenworth for the Padres. Now, if you guys remember when me and Ben did our second base list, I didn't have him on here because I thought he was going to be playing predominantly in left field with ha Sung Kim coming from Japan. But Cronenworth has been playing in sec- second base quite a bit. He just hits a lot. And for a throwaway prospect, not really throwaway, but kind of a no-name prospect in the Tommy Pham trade for, I think, Xavier Edwards is his name. He's also a two-way player, which we've seen him pitch once this year, which was cool to see. It was, you know, more because of a blowout game. They're not really using him as a traditional pitcher. Um, or I think it was because it was a late-inning game. Something like one of those two. Um, one of the phenomenal players in that phenomenal infield, Jake Cronenworth. Number six, another guy I didn't have because I intended it. I thought he was going to be playing a different position. That's what Merrifield, the Kansas City Royals, started off the year really hot. He's a really solid solid player. Hits well, steals bases. He led the league in hits a couple years ago. Plays a nice second base. Can also play center field and right field. Really good athlete, man. Number seven, Jose Altuve. Uh, I think he's off to a pretty decent year. I need to check on that. Cheating. I'm always going to have that in the back of my head. So he gets bumped down. He was dreadful last year, obviously. Picked it up a little more in the playoffs. Um, defensively, not anything great anymore. You know, you might see him decline soon just because he's getting up there a little more, you know, and the cheating stuff does knock him down a little more. Ozzy Alves comes in number eight. He's a slot tad bit overrated in my opinion. He's a good player though. You know, he, he needs to give up switch hitting in my opinion. He's way better from the right side than the left side. He might need to make that switch. His splits from the, you know, that way is kind of phony how different they are. But Ozzy Alves, really good player. Hits for good power. Really good for that Braves, Braves team. Him and Acuna, two young players for that team with Freddie Freeman, Marcelo Zuna, other really awesome bats in that lineup. Number nine, Brandon Lau. Uh, he can play second. He can play right at the outfield. Kind of does, you know, Tampa Bay Rays of, you know, moving guys around, whatnot. Really solid player. Didn't have, he had a pretty good year last year. Started out rough in the postseason. Got a lot better towards the end. Brandon Lau's a good player. Coming in at number nine, you know, he doesn't play as much as these other guys just for, you know, being a Tampa Bay Ray, but he's a, he's a good player. I'm going to take a water break real quick. Number 10, Colton Wong, not the greatest hitter in the world, but he's the best defensive second baseman in the league. So I got to put some respect on that. Uh, Got to go faster, bro. Less explaining. All right. Uh, I'll do less explaining. Third base, my favorite position. You want to know why? David Wright's my favorite player of all time. Third base. Number one, Nolan Arenado. What did I say? I said he's the best third baseman in baseball. Oh, Colorado. No Colorado anymore. Instagram people. Clouds. <laughs> um, they always told me, oh, he's Colorado, all this shit. Road splits, all that crap. He's playing unbelievable in St. Louis. What a steal, man. And I kind of wanted the Mets to get him. Uh, obviously, a hefty contract, too which we didn't really need in our, on our books, but he's such a good player. Maybe the best defensive third baseman. He's hitting really well, too. Number two, arguably should have been the AL MVP last year, Jose Ramirez, phenomenal player, does everything well. He also steals bases, too, which a lot of third basemen don't. Number three, Anthony Rendon, probably the best hitting third baseman. He's just been unbelievable. Uh, Jose, if you're watching this, another player, stud player on the Angels, being absolute wasted on a garbage team. Number four, Manny Machado. 
Manny Machado, Mets fans, is a reason you should not panic about Francisco Lindor. Tough year when he first got to San Diego. Next year, almost won the MVP. Uh, Andrew says, thank you, Nolan, at one. Someone has a brain. Yes, Nolan Arenado fan club for life. Um, getting back to Manny Machado. Had a tough year of his first year in San Diego. Uh, and then almost won MVP the next year. So Mets fans, don't panic just yet. I know it's ugly. I know it sucks. But yeah, Manny Machado, great hitter. Maybe the best arm out of any third baseman. He's just so loosey-goosey in the field, but it works so well. Manny Machado is awesome. Number five, Alex Bregman. Yeah, cheating. You know, it sucks. But he's a really good player, man. Almost won the MVP in 2019. He walks more than he strikes out. He plays a pretty decent third base as well. He's just a really good hitter. Number six, probably the best defensive player in in baseball, Matt Chapman. Not hitting off to, you know, great this year, coming off a pretty tough injury. Matt Chapman's a really good player, though. His defense is just, it's so awesome. It's so fun to watch his highlights. Number seven, an older guy, Josh Donaldson for the Twins. He's just super consistent outside of, you know, a couple tough years from injuries at his end of his Toronto days. He's a former MVP. He hits so well. He's an elite defender, too. He's so good defensively. Master of the bare hand play. Josh Donaldson is awesome. Number eight, Chris Bryant. If he keeps it up this year, he'll definitely move up on the list. Solid defender. I don't know why they play they play him in the outfield so much. It's stupid. But um, uh, decent third baseman, a really good hitter. He probably is going to get moved at the deadline this year. Um, really solid player. Best hitter on, on that Cubs team, in my opinion. Number nine, kind of the opposite of Matt Chapman. Elite hitter with horrendous defense. Rafael Devers. Rafael Devers. Brutal defensively, but he is such a good hitter. You gotta find a place for him on this list. And then rounding out this list, number 10, Justin Turner. Kind of does everything well. Older player. He keeps getting better, though. Hit a nice home run against the Astros last night, so that was good to see. Before we get to shortstop, let's get to this chat. Can you grab the guitar and play Take Me Out to the Ball Game? Next episode, I'll do that. I need to learn the, I need to learn the song. Manny Machado, Dirty Player. Not really anymore. Um, uh, Maniac Matt Chapman, woo-woo. Donaldson, future Met. I mean, what is he, like 38? Unless you trade for him. I mean, the Twins have been awful, but if we're trading for a Minnesota Twin, get me Byron Buxton. My God, he's good. All right. One more water sip. It's tough when you're talking this much. I don't have a co-host to, to bring out all the dead, the dead sound. Hayden in the house. Hey, man, sorry running late. Just got back from baseball. But hey, man, hey, you don't have to be here. It's all good. Thank you for watching. I'll salute to you, Hayden. Good to see you at baseball practice. You got to do a video, man, watching like your highlights or some shit like that. Ooh, a lot of girls watching. Okay, Hayden. Okay. I see you, buddy. All right, let's get to shortstop. If you knew me before this off, before this season, you would never think I would say this guy's number one. But Fernando Tatis Jr. is the best shortstop in baseball. Now, yes, coming this year, I said, wait, hold your horses. Let him play the full year. I think the contract he got, I still think it's stupid how you know, they're paying him so prematurely when you know, they could be getting him on a discount. But what does this guy do badly? He makes occasional errors, but he makes up for it for making unworldly plays in the in at shortstop that no one else can that no one else can make. And every year he just hits. I know he hasn't played a full year yet, but he's never been bad. You know, he's had a couple injuries here and there. But he's just he is so good. He's arguably the face of baseball. I'm totally I'm totally hopping on the bandwagon now. Fernando Tatis is not is now the number one shortstop in baseball, in my opinion. Now, I don't think people should be saying, "Oh, watch out, Mike Trout! Uh, what he's taking your spot for best player, uh, uh, in baseball." But Fernando Tatis has taken over as the best shortstop in baseball. Number two, division rival, Trevor Story, gonna get paid a shit ton this off season. Uh, Andrew, um, you might want to leave when I get to center field. <laughs> um. No, that's funny. He's not. We're throwing hands tomorrow. <laughs> He's not number one, man. I'm sorry. Uh, Trevor Story, he does everything well. He's maybe the best base running shortstop in the league. Him and Trey Turner, both phenomenal base runners, both super great athletes, man. Uh, Trevor Story does everything well. Yeah, he plays in Colorado, but I'm tired of hearing that. Nolan Arenado just proved value morons who say that, oh, he's only good because he plays in Colorado. He's going to get traded at the deadline to a contender. You're going to hopefully see him in the playoffs. He's going to be unbelievable. Trevor Story is so good, man. Number three, 
Francisco Lindor. I'm bumping him down from one to three. He's just been inexcusably bad this year. He has been so bad this year. His defense, great. I'm glad that his plate appearances have, you know, not affected his, you know, stellar defense. But I knew there was going to be an adjustment period. I knew he was going to struggle a little bit at first. But this much? Jeez, man. I mean, his, he makes such soft contact. He's walking a little more than usual, so that's a sign looking forward. But he's just been so bad. If you want to boo him, boo him. I never tell people how to be fans of teams. I hate when people do that. Francis Lindor, he's going to be fine. He's going to bounce back. If he has, if he finishes this year with an awful year, we got him for 10 years, and he's going to be a stud. Don't you worry. Francis Lindor, still stud shortstop, number three. Number four, Trey Turner, maybe one of the most well-rounded players in baseball. He's the fastest player in baseball, plays good defense. He's a phenomenal hitter. Most speed guys can't hit for shit. Guys like Billy Hamilton, guys like that can't hit. He's one of the big exceptions. Kind of him and Byron Bucks are the two big exceptions. Trey Turner is such a good player. He's not a good as good of a hitter as my next pick, but he does. He feels better and he runs better. Speaking of the next pick, Xander Bogarts, number five, dog shit defensively. He's so bad defensively, but he's the best hitting shortstop in baseball. He is so good. He's off to an incredible year this year. Still super underrated. Xander Bogarts is unbelievable. Also on my fantasy team. Let's go. Number six. Kind of a downgraded version from Xander Bogart from the other side of the plate, Corey Seager. My issue with him is he gets hurt a lot, and he's not great defensively. A little better defensively, but not as good of a hitter. Obviously, just one. Uh, obviously, just one. What am I saying? W- World Series MVP for the Dodgers really kind of helped carry them through to that World Series victory. He broke his hand. He's going to be out for a little bit, but Corey Seager is still a great player. Number seven, one of the most fun players in baseball. Uh, Tim Anderson, he's really improved a lot at shortstop defensively, and he's just a phenomenal hitter. Won the best, uh, won the batting title last year, I think. It was either him or, no, two years ago. Won the batting title. Hits for high average, hits for power. Just a phenomenal hitter. Eight, Bo Bichette. Again, not a great defender, but he's a phenomenal, Not I wouldn't say phenomenal hitter. He will be phenomenal eventually. Was a stud prospect, obviously. He's playing really well this year. Number nine, Carlos Correa. Kind of bump him down a bit because he gets hurt all the time and, you know, he's a cheater, all that. Let's get to the hot take of the day. Uh, before that, I got to read this comment because Hayden left an essay for me to read. Lindor is not doing well. I figured a new location would change him a bit, but not the Ben Mendoza line bad. His at-bats are getting worse. He's not even the, hitting the ball well. Um, and it's fine. Uh, wait. And it finds gloves in. Yeah, I mean, he makes a lot of soft contact. That's the thing. Like that, that, that's the worrisome thing. Like, he just, they're like lazy hits, man. I mean, obviously, not, they don't turn to hits because the average is so low. But yeah, Goat versus Trout. Uh, I would like to see DeGrom face Trout in the All Star game. Got to see Prime Trout. Well, Trout's hurt this year, so you don't know if he's going to be ready for the All Star game. I, I hope we play the Angels one day because that would be an awesome matchup, man. All right, hot take. Number 10, Isaiah Kiner Falafa, not Javier Baez. Javier Baez is maybe the most overrated player in baseball. He just, he doesn't even look, he, you know when you, you play Little League and you say, oh, keep your eye on the ball? I think Javi Baez just throws it out the window. He's just, they just like him because he makes all the flashy plays and, you know, makes a bunch of stupid errors too. And, you know, just swings the worst discipline I've ever seen. He, he's in like the lowest percent, percent, I can't even talk. He's in like the worst percentile for Ks. He swings and misses an insane amount. He is not a good hitter. He hits for power, but I don't value guys who have an on-base percentage below 300. You need to get on base. I don't care how, if you're hitting, you know, 30 home runs a year or whatnot, that's great. But when you're just useless, your other at-bats can't make contact to save your life. Longest swing in the league. I can't stand this guy. Um, Good defender. Great defender. He's a great defender, a little overrated. You know who's the best defensive shortstop in the league? Isaiah Kanafalefa from the Rangers. If you were building your dream team, this is the guy you want off your bench. Now you're probably saying, oh, why is a bench guy, you know, a starting player or a top 10 shortstop? Well, for most teams, he's not the starting shortstop. I mean, if you're picking the best, he's not the best shortstop in baseball, obviously, but he can play short unbelievably. He won a gold glove at third base and he's played catcher before. That's incredibly valuable. Isaiah Kiner falefa and he's also hitting really well this year on an awful team. Isaiah Kiner falefa at number 10. Before we get to left field, let's hit this chat. Uh, Trout will make the all-star 
yeah, but he might not play in the All Star game if he's hurt. But yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's obviously a popularity contest. I hope tonight's game isn't postponed or delayed. I live in New York and it's thunderstorming out Saturday. Matt, what part of New York do you live? I'm curious because I'm I'm originally from New York. I'm from Brooklyn. I now live up in uh, in Rochester. Uh, but that's it. yeah. What what part of New York? Because I saw in the Bronx it was thundering. Don't worry, it's it's seltzer, not not beer. Don't you guys worry. All right, let's get to left field. I'm gonna go quick. Oh, Kingston. I'm gonna go quick here. Left field sucks. This this position is a bunch of scrubs. Um, not a bunch of scrubs, but it's a it's a weak position. So I'm gonna go quick. Number one's Christian Yelich. I know he's not off to the greatest start this year, last year, down year, but his 2018 and 2019 were just freaking ridiculous. Should have had back to back. Uh, MVPs, unbelievable. Christian Yelich, not a great defender, no, but he's a phenomenal hitter. Still a great player. Marcelo Zuna, number two, not off to a great year. Awful defensively. Last year, though, was just unbelievable. He had stud years with the Marlins in the past as well. Next, Jesse Winker, off to an unbelievable start this year. Uh, really good player, man. Ben was getting me on, you know, on to me for not having him after his last year. I said, let's wait. He hits, he hits the ball really hard. He's a really good player for that Reds team. You know, Mets fans don't like him. He obviously weighed by to, uh, by to us when we um, when we played them, and hey, he made the last out, waved to us. So, yeah, fuck you, Jesse Winker. No, he's kidding. I'm over that. That, that was kind of funny, honestly. But, yeah, Jesse Winker, number four. Number, uh, number three. Number four, Elo Jimenez. He's probably out the year, but he's just an unbelievable player. You know, unbelievable hitter. Uh, not a great defender, but... He was a stud prospect at one point. Really good left fielder, man. He might move to right field, though, with if they played Vaughn out in left field permanently. But, yeah. Number five, Michael Brantley. Just a really good all-around hitter. Um, you know, veteran presence on that Astros team. It looked like he was going for the Blue Jays uh, this offseason, but turned out he re-signed with the Astros. Kind of interesting there. Michael Brantley, number five. Number six, Mark Canna. Another really good hitter. Decent defender as well. He kind of does everything well. So, yeah. Number seven, A.J. Pollock for the Dodgers. His issue is he's always hurt, but he's a really good defender. Former center fielder, former gold glove center fielder for the Diamondbacks. He's also a really good hitter. Had a really good year last year. He's just kind of always injured. But for that Dodgers team, the fact that he's like the nine hitter is just, it's unfair. Number eight, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Off to a really bad year this year, but he's a really good player. You know, Blue Jays fans kind of overrate him a bit. They they said they didn't want to trade for Lindor because, I mean, back when Lindor was, you know, playing well, um, because they didn't want to give up Lourdes Gurriel Jr., who's actually older than Lindor. He's just kind of a late bloomer because he came from Cuba. Brother of Yuli Gurriel, who almost made my first baseman list. First baseman was loaded. There's a lot of guys who deserved it, like a Brandon Belt, who didn't quite make it. Number nine, Randy Arozarena. Best postseason of all time, and he's still kind of doing it this year. Unbelievable player, Randy Rosarena. Really good athlete, too, for a guy his size. And then number 10, Dom Smith. Off to a bad year. Awful defensively. He's not a left fielder. He's more of a first baseman or DH. But you can't ignore the year he had last year. Unbelievable. Let's get to this chat. Uh, whenever you feel dumb, just remember I had Jesse Winker and Trevor Rogers on my fantasy team at one point before the season started. Uh, did you cut them or trade them? Because that's even worse. Jack in the box. What's up, man? LFGM. Let's go, Mets. I got a dope fantasy team. Hayden, my league hates me. Oh, man. Yeah, share your guys' fantasy leagues. And if you're – we did one this year, but we'll definitely do one again next year because I want to get more viewers on that on that fantasy league. All right, let's move to center field. Uh, Andrew, if you're still here, number one's Mike Trout, not Brandon Nimmo. Uh, Mike Trout's the best player in baseball. He, I think, has a career OPS above 1,000. He just does everything well. He's a future Hall of Famer if he retired right now. Uh, he might be the best player of all time, and he's getting wasted. Uh, yes, Zeroos. I did shortstop. You can rewind a bit. Um, or just wait till the stream's over and go back if you want to hear center field and right field. Um, but Hint Lindor is number three. Um, well, what was I saying about Mike Trout? My, maybe the best player in baseball right now. He's kind of hurt. Gets wasted by the Angels, which that's kind of their motto. Um, Jose, if you're watching, you're probably fuming right now. But uh, number two, Cody Bellinger. Uh, hurt this year. Didn't have a great year last year, but 2019. Excuse me. NL MVP. Great defender coming from a former shorts, uh, former first baseman. He moved to right field, won a Gold Glove there. Was in the Gold Glove discussion for center field last year. Really awesome player, man. Hopefully, we can get him back soon. Uh, 
went get him healthy. Another guy who's hurt too, George Springer, signed a huge contract with the Blue Jays this offseason. Obviously, us Mets fans really wanted him. Fortunately, we didn't get him. He's been hurt this year, so you can't really judge him. I think he's only played like, what, like three games or something. Number four, breakout player of the year, Byron Buxton. Started breaking out really well last year, but this dude is so good. Maybe the best defensive center fielder in the league. He's fast, and he hits for a ton of power. Now, his on-base percentage has never been anything great, but he's slowly but surely gotten better every year. He's gotten better every year, which I think he can get better than this. And he just needs to stay healthy. He's, he's always hurt, it seems like, which is really unfortunate, unfortunately. But Byron Buxton's an unbelievable player. Number five, Mets fans are going to, like, send death threats to me because I have Trent Grisham over Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo gets on base unbelievably well. But one thing that he does bad that Trent Grisham's elite at is defense. Trent Grisham is such a good defensive center fielder. Won a goal glove last year. Nimmo's been better. He's not been, he hasn't been anything great. He's been hurt a lot too, which is something that Trent Grisham doesn't do is, you know, he, he kind of gets hurt a lot with, uh, sorry, Nimmo gets hurt a lot. It seems like every couple of years, you know, he hasn't played a ton. You know, he's only had, was fourth year in the big leagues or fourth full year. I mean, 2018 was the first year he got like legit consistent playing time. So 2019 was missed most of the year. Last year was unbelievable. So I just have Trent Grisham a little more just because center fielder is such an important position for defense. But Brendan Nimmo coming at number six, they're pretty interchangeable, though. If, if Nimmo, he's an elite hitter, best eye in baseball probably. He gets on base, it's unbelievable level. He, he's a phenomenal player, man. Number eight, Alex Verdugo. Alex Verdugo acquired for Mookie Betts. So yeah, it kind of stings. But uh, now Andrew <laughs> wants to <laughs> set up a boxing match. Hey, man, well, let's go. I got you. Trent Grisham's better than Brandon Nemo. Ooh, okay. Back to Alex Verdugo, like I said. Really good defensive center fielder. More of a right fielder, yeah, but he can play in the court. He can play in center as well, and he's an unbelievable hitter. He is such a good hitter, man. Tough that you lost Mookie Betts for him, but he's a really good player. Number nine, Ramon Laureano, Mr. Highlight Reel himself. Maybe the best arm in baseball. Makes some unbelievable plays, and he's also a good hitter. Number 10, Kyle Lewis. Unbelievable year last year. I say unbelievable way too much. I need to use unbelievable as more of like a more a unique, like a special word for like the really players who are unbelievable. Really good year last year. Been hurt a bit this year. Not off to the greatest start. Can also play, also plays a really good center field. Right field, best best position in baseball probably. The, the top four, top three, more specifically, is just unbelievable. Number one, Mookie Betts. Not for the greatest year so far. He is such a good player though. 28, 20, his 2018 was maybe the best year of the decade from the offensive side. He was so good that year. Oh, my God. And he's the best, maybe the best defensive outfielder in baseball. He can also play right field, but can also play center field. Mookie Betts is so good, and it's unfair that the Dodgers got him. Uh, number two, I actually moved Ronald Acuna over Juan Soto because Ronald Acuna has really improved this year. He's not striking out so much anymore like he used to. He's kind of just as good of a hitter as Juan Soto. I think Juan Soto's a little more clutch. I fear him a little bit more. But Soto, uh, Acuna is a much better defender. It's not even close, really. And he's a better base runner. Soto, though, still an unbelievable hitter. People call him like Ted Williams Jr. He's a, They're both top five players in baseball. And eventually, I think I want to do my top 25 players in baseball um, or top 20, something like that. Both these guys are both top five players in baseball. If I, if, I'll give my way too early top five. Trout one, Betts two, DeGrom three, Acuna uh, Soto. That's my five. Juan Soto is so good. Number four, Bryce Harper. Yankee fans hate me already. Uh, he's better than Aaron Judge. Higher ceiling, in my opinion. And he actually stays healthy. Aaron Judge, unbelievable player. He's off to a great start. Doesn't play after, though. He's always hurt. That's why he gets stuck down a bit. Pure talent, he's high. He's probably a little bit better than Harper for pure, pure talent, really. You know, he should have won MVP back in 2017. Harper's MVP was also one of the best years of the decade. Both of them are really good defensively in right field as well. Both really great players. Number six, Michael Conforto. Off to a really disappointing year, unfortunately, but he plays a really good right field. He has been this year, especially. And he's just a really good hitter. And, you know, seeing, you know, the improvements he made from last year was really, you know, it, it's disappointing to see him playing this poorly because you, you really, I really expect him to really take off this year. So, yeah, number six, Nicholas Castellanos comes at number seven. Better hitter than Conforto, but not as good of a defender. He's off to a really good start. He's so fun to watch, man. 
great player in that Reds lineup. Number eight, Mike Yastrzemski. Giants are winning a lot of games this year. He's a big reason why. Really good player. Can also play center field. Number nine, Joey Gallo. Player a lot of Mets fans want to trade for. One of the best defensive right fielders, which is weird because how big he is. And he's also a former infielder, so you wouldn't expect him. Can also play center. He can play left. He can play third. He can play first. Really good player. Bat a little hit or miss. Unbelievable power. It's just about, you know, not striking out as much. He's a three, three true outcome player, but I think in a better lineup, he'd play a lot better. Number 10, Tasker Hernandez, a phenomenal hitter for the Blue Jays with really bad defense. Number, all right, let's go to DH now. DH, I only have five guys just because it's only in the American League this year. And I'll go quick because DH is boring. It's just hitting. J.D. Martinez won. Uh, I think supposedly like the whole iPad thing really helped him out this year. Um, you know, having the iPads in the dugouts this year. So, yeah, uh, you know, being able to watch video through after you're at bat. So he said something about that really helping him this year, down your last year, but he's he's so good, man. One of the best hitters in baseball. Almost won an MVP as a DH back in 2018. I think he finished, t- I think he was finished fourth or something like that. Number two, the most talented player in baseball, Shohei Otani. This dude isn't human, man. He throws 95 with, crazy splitters and sliders and then hits me i think he has a home run lead currently something like that he's just he it's he's a cheat code he's unfair and he's being wasted by the angels three uh you can't tell me this guy is not steroids nelson cruz he gets better with age he's unbelievable one of the best hitters obviously doesn't play the field he's a dh we're talking dhs now you are on alvarez a young version of nelson cruz from the left side um he, he's on he, he's such a good hitter you know hurt all of last year he won the MVP after playing like 80, or no, sorry, the, the rookie of the year after playing, what, 80 games or something. Uh, so, yeah, Jordan Alvarez is so good. Number five, John Carlos Stan, one of the best hitters in baseball. Always hurt, though. This chat has got some funny stuff going on, so I'm going to get back to it. Um, for all you guys who listen to me on podcasting platforms, I live stream on YouTube. We have a live chat. Makes it a lot of fun. Uh, uh, most of the list has been good, but come on, Nimmo is low-key. Uh, wait. Nimmo is is too low. Grammar needs some work, man. Jeez. J literally isn't human. Ha ha ha. Kim Jong Trump. Huh. I'm not human. Andrew <laughs> Mets fan versus Hayden on the TikTok versus <laughs> YouTubers boxing event. It should be Mets fan versus James McCann for uh that should be content creators versus players. Me versus who's a player I can't. Uh, Jordan uh, Jordan Yamamoto, uh, which by the way, guys, sending his wife a bunch of hate when he stinks. That's not cool, but he sucks. He's terrible. And I'm, I'm, I've never been a huge fan of him. So maybe, yeah, maybe me and him, McCann versus Mets fan. And then uh, fuck, Rojas versus uh, Rojas versus uh, Hayden. And uh, who's the, Andrew, who's the player you hate on the Mets who just really grinds your gears? I don't know. Let me know. Let's get to starting pitchers. Let me take a sip real quick. You're starting. Oh, geez. We're going to do starting pitchers and then relief pitchers. Number one, we got Jacob DeGrom. Best pitcher in baseball. Just came back from the injured list. So good. Oh, Andrew. Yeah, he doesn't like Alonzo because he rejected you for an autograph. Wah, wah. You, you better embrace him. He's a beast. Um, number two, Garrett Cole. Other side of New York, obviously. Phenomenal year this year. He's been unbelievable. He is so good. Now nah, it's good to DeGrom, though, because the Yankee fans want to tell me he is. Most of them are now saying, yeah, DeGrom's really better. Garrett Cole is so good. Three, Shane Bieber. Won a triple crown last year. That's all I have to say. I'll say more, though. One of the best curveballs in baseball. One of the better. He's super young, too, which is unbelievable for a pitcher of him. His caliber being that young, phenomenal. Number four, Mets fans hate the guy. I get it. Trevor Bauer. Really rubs me the wrong way. You know, I used to be a big fan of the whole, you know, how much media stuff he does now, but the whole whole free agency debacle with the whole Mets shirts and all that shit is just, that, that, that bugged me. Uh, so, but Trevor Bowers, he is so good. You know, he, is he worth $40 million a year? Eh, maybe, but he's probably the best pitcher on that Dodgers team. He is so good. He's number four. Number five, Corbin Burns. Uh, Corbin Burns walks nobody strikes out everyone 
probably the ace of that Brewers staff. It's not him. If it's not him, it's our number six guy, Brandon Woodruff. Both these guys make my top 10. Brandon Woodruff, he's always been good. It's just been staying healthy has been kind of his issue. He's gotten better a, a lot recently. Brandon Woodruff is awesome. Seven, you Darvish for the Padres. Absolute steal from the Cubs. They got nothing back. They got some uh, Zach Davies with a fluky year and a bunch of kids. Uh, you Darvish is so good. The ace of that staff, he's been so good. You know, he had a couple tough years initially with the Cubs. Obviously, a stud with the Rangers back in the day. He's been at it a while. You Darvish is awesome. Eight, Max Scherzer. He's getting up there a bit, but he still shoves. He's still so good. Number nine, this one pains me, Zach Wheeler. You know, it's weird. Some nights, he, he pitches well every night, it seems like, every time he pitches. But some nights, he strikes out no one. And then other, other times, he just can't. He strikes out everyone. Throws really hard. And he also hits, which is really good for a starting pitcher. You know, probably won't be for a while when the DH comes back. Really frustrating to see Zach Wheeler on the Phillies now. I always said he probably needed a little bit of a change of scenery. But Zach Wheeler is so good. Rounding out the list, number 10, another super young guy, Walker Bueller. Let's get to relief pitchers. Number one, Josh Hader, one of the more versatile relief pitchers in the league. He's really good. He, you know, throws from the left hand side of the plate. We're not the plate on the mound. What am I saying? Um, he can go multiple innings and he's just phenomenal. Number two, I rolled this Chapman. Until the other day, he hadn't given up a run like all year. So scary. You know, he throws an insane fastball, super hard, nasty slider. Um, never good in the big moments. Uh, shout out to Mike Brasso and uh, Jose Altuve. But Rolla Chapman is so good. Number three, James Karinchak of the Indians. one of the, Probably the best right-handed relief pitcher in baseball, in my opinion. So good. He's so nasty. Off to another unbelievable year. Number four, super underrated pick right here, Ryan Presley of the Astros. One of the best curveballs in baseball. Insane spin on that. His other pitches are really good. Since Osuna got hurt last year, and now they cut him, he's still taking that co- closer rule and been unbelievable. Edwin Diaz comes in at number five. He has the talent to be an absolute amazing pitcher. I think that his 2019 year, for a little bit, is always going to be like, ah, is, is the old Diaz back? Because that year he was just so good. But I saw, I th- I saw his stat cast numbers today from that year, and he got really unlucky. Now he's still terrible. I hate saying that. You know, he gave up 15 homers because of un- bad luck. Now, he's still awful, but he's come back. He's he's so he, – you can only really put him in in safe situations. He seems to only do well then. But, yeah, he, he's still awesome, though. He's You know, Mets fan always says he's a top ten, top three reliever. He's top five. I'm not ready to put him top three yet. Oh, wow, we got a lot of people here. I'm going to put the link for the call-ins if anyone wants to call in. I'm going to be wrapping up this list a little bit. Um, but if you guys want to call in, link is in the chat. Zach Britton coming in at number six, another stud for the Yankees. One of the best ground ball pitchers in baseball from the left-hand side. He's awesome. Number seven, Devin Williams. He was unfair last year, up to a bit of a tough start this year, but the talent is clearly there. Devin Williams is awesome. Eight, Matt Barnes of the Red Sox. He's also off to an unbelievable year this year. Uh, just a, a really good pitcher all around. Number nine, talked to him last night. Seth Lugo, baby. We were all, me and a couple of the Mets fans at the minor league game last night. We're going bananas. Uh, he pitched two innings for us. Uh, he's one of the most versatile pitchers in baseball. Now, yeah, he had like a five ERA last year because they used him as a starter towards the end of the year. He didn't get that many relief innings, but 2019 was phenomenal. He's one of the best curveballs in baseball, if not the best curveball in baseball. Has a really good mix of pitches. He's a really intelligent pitcher too. It seems like he's always throwing for right pitch. Watching this guy, you can't. It's not just the numbers that reflect how good he is. Really look to look forward to seeing him get back healthy. You know, he had the was it the loose body in his elbow this offseason. So yeah, number ten. He's most people think of him more as a starting pitcher, but he's been a relief pitcher this year. I think he just got hurt. But Michael Kopech of the White Sox. This is finally kind of his breaking out year. He throws unbelievably hard. Was a top prospect for a reason. So yeah, Michael Kopech runs. Uh, Takes one of my, I can't speak today. Um, he rounds out my list. So that was my list of top 10 players at every position. Thank you guys so much for watching. That clip was from this past week's episode of the Big Apple Baseball Banter Podcast, which is now available on Spotify, Apple, wherever you guys get podcasts from. Please also drop us a five star and a review if your podcasting platform has that feature. 
Please like, comment, subscribe, and share the videos. Appreciate it, guys. I'll see you next time.